Imagine me a preacher. I'm mm -hmm. walking around smoking. Imagine me a preacher walking around flirting with women. Imagine me a bling bling preacher, rings on every finger and necklaces hanging around my neck. You would think I'm a pimp. Yeah, I can see you didn't have any rings on your fingers. No, I don't wear them. Are you married? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. How long have you been married? I've been married now for 28 get, years. Get it right. And all of your, and you're the same mom? Oh, yes. Kids? Oh, yes. No, I don't have no children outside of me and my wife. Welcome, welcome, welcome again. And this time we are continuing with that um, video we started last time, part two, part two. So um, this is the same video, but before we continue, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment below. Oh, by the way, um, if you're going to comment, please do so, but respectfully, because if you start saying bad, bad stuff, I will not be able to see them because YouTube will block them. It's not me. I didn't put it that way. I think it is YouTube guidelines. So if you want me to read your comment, please do so respectfully. Anyways, let us continue. So, without further talking, let's start cooking. showing their underwear this is church this is what church has become now okay well, so it should be a difference between what you wear in the street and clubbing and partying in what you wear in church so society says it's normal just to be naked it's normal to look that way no it is not we have pastor gino jennings here would you like to talk to him he thinks you're a prostitute he thinks you're a whore <laughs> Give them a call, 215-515-3481. That's 215-515-3481. I think sometimes some of the words you use are a little harsh. Mm -hmm. You got to reach the people the way you got to reach them. But how, how can you reach people if, they, if you want them to change if you're... Well, let me say this. I must say, uh, some criticize my language. But the language I'm using is in the Bible. The Bible says, do not prostitute thine daughter to cause her to be a whore. I didn't say anything that's not in the Bible. We have Pastor Gino Jennings here, right here on the Quincy Harris Morning Show with K Fox. Keep it locked. It is 814. We'll take your calls coming up next. So let me pause right here. So this right here is actually, I think it's from Leviticus chapter, nine, chapter 19. I think it is. Um, do not prostitute thy daughters. Um, I think it's from Leviticus chapter 19. I could be wrong. Let me just quickly look because I this right here um, is because um, the way I know those ones, I actually preached on them on that part before. Um, I think the message was called um, what best, what best pleases the Lord. And uh, I talked about that part. I think it's chapter 19. If it is not chapter 19, it might be chapter 20 of Leviticus. But, um, hold on. Let me actually see. I know it's somewhere over there. Either chapter 19, uh, chapter 20, or chapter 21.
Yeah, okay, chapter 19, that's right. It is chapter 19. That's what I thought, chapter 19. And I'm going to show you guys what it says right here, chapter 19 of Leviticus and verse 29. Chapter 19, chapter 19 and verse 29. Um, well, this actually is something else. Let me give it to you right here. Okay. And it says this. If you guys cannot see it, I'll make it bigger. So you guys can be able to read it. And it says, Do not, do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a harlot. Lest the land fall into idolatry and the land become full of wickedness. So, the funny thing is, that word prostitute right here that you guys were looking at, that word actually means, uh, in Hebrew it means kalar, which means to pierce. Yeah, it means to pierce. So, you know, there was an expression, and say they are, you're piercing a woman, meaning like, and basically into what we called having sex. That's one of them. That's one of the way people pierce themselves sexually, emotionally, physically. So a prostitute is a person who's also piercing their body. Now, there is something you mentioned earlier talking about um, talking about um, the way people dress. When we just started that one. And I'm going to read to you something because many Christians, supposed to be Christians, they fall into that category. Let's see what this one actually says right here. Um, I, I'm going to put that under under the description so you guys can actually read it for yourself. It's called Testimony for the Church, Volume 1, and it's number 2. The chapter 22, the two ways. I'm going to put the, the link in the description so you guys can see it for yourself but i'm gonna go to that part where many christians where many christians have fallen into that they are just like the world but yet they are thinking they are in the church he says I saw many traveling in the in this broad road. You know, Jesus talked about the narrow way and the and the and the broad way. So there are two people traveling, and they decided that they think they are, are traveling on the narrow way. And he says this. And I saw many traveling in this broad way, which basically leads to destruction, who had the word written upon them dead to the world dead to the world the end of all things is at hand be ye also ready so those are the supposedly Christians who have that word written in their, in their mind that says I am dead to the world but they look just like all the vain ones around them except or a shade of sadness which I noticed upon their countenances. So what does that mean? So, like he, like the like this man was saying, Gino Jennings, if you are in the church, you should not be able to. You should be able to distinguish a woman in the church and a woman in the world. Okay, so. Um, So, what does that mean? Let's continue. It says, Their conversation was just like that of the gay, thoughtless ones around them, but they would occasionally point with great satisfaction to the letters of, on their garments, calling, them, calling for the others to have the same upon theirs. They were in the broad way, yet they professed, to be of the number who were traveling the narrow way. So those are deceived Christians. 
so supposedly those around them would say well there is no distinction between us we are alike we dress and talk and act alike so basically when this man right here Juno Jennings is talking about there should be a distinction between how you dress in the church and in the world he is not lying about that because many Christians they act they talk and they dress just like the world and then they think they are going into the narrow way but but let's keep it moving we have a uh, pastor Gino Jennings in here it's the Quincy Harris morning show with K Fox it is 824 K yeah I have, I have a few questions for the pastor people are calling right now okay. 215-515-3481 Two one five five one five three four eight one. People have questions. I believe we have Gina from North Philly. Uh, what is your question? What, what do you have to say to Pastor Jennings? That was that was, ter- that was the name I just erased. I'm sorry, that was Teresa. I thought she already did it. I know. Christians supposed to lead as as example, or by example, right? Yes. However, there are ways to approach the situation. You are really, really harsh. But I understand. I understand because, you know, the Bible does say it's going to be a great falling away from the church. A lot mm-hmm. of people have fallen away because of the way people are acting in the church and looking and dressing and, you know, doing all kinds of things. Even pastors themselves are going the wrong route, you know, doing worldly and ungodly things and still come to church and, and preach on that pulpit. And that's supposed to be sacred. That's God's sanctuary. Mm-hmm. That's holy ground. You know what I mean? That's supposed to be holy ground. So, you, I mean, you're not wrong. And I'd give my take my hat off to you, and I say, "Kudos, keep on leading by example." We have Tino from North Philly. You actually attend uh, Pastor Gino's ch- uh, church, correct? Yes, I do. And it is nothing the pastor says that's not in the Bible. And it's the strict language that he used that brought me to the attention about 15 years ago. I don't need my religion sugarcoated. I need to be my maker, knowing what I need to know exactly. about how to be acceptable in His eyes. I don't want scripture redone, and this is why. Yeah, and that's the problem. People like the truth to be sugar-coated. Well then, no. No. Because if you don't really know, you can just Google it. What happens when you sugarcoat the truth? Let's move on. Other churches. Now, I'm not critical of other people. I do believe that Everything that the pastor says is supported by the Bible, unlike every other church that I have visited throughout my life. We have Teresa from Southwest Philly. Teresa, how you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, we have Pastor Gino Jennings in here. Yes, I was just listening on the radio, and I kind of really got offended about his, the way he's relaying that women are prostitutes and whores the way they're dressed. My 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 um question you is what that. about the men? Because I was raised in Germantown, uh, and yes, it's been all. You see, when you start giving women accountability, what do they do? Well, how about the men? They're always going to do that. Why? Because they don't like accountability. But let's keep it moving. It's been back in the decade. But he's taking parts out the Bible to be living women, and he's supposed to be a pastor. I would never attend his church because deep down, what about the Catholic Church, the molestation, the men? What about the men? He ain't say nothing about the men. I don't want to cuss, but it's really making me yeah, offended the way he's talking about women and the way they're dressed and the way they're, they're lips and this and this and that. Why are you so worried about that? If you're trying to get the word, get the f- the word and just oh, worry oh, about oh, that. Oh, he's a, b- b- listen, Sister, can I address what you just said? Because yeah. I, I don't disagree with you. Yeah, I agree exactly with you 100%. But again, it's just a segment of the mm-hmm. message that's being played. But if you heard the entire message, I am addressing the men. In fact, I'm very adamant about the condition of our men. And some men say that I'm too harsh on them. Okay, thank you. Thank you I think for you calling. meant stereotyping. Yeah. Uh, Pastor. Yes, sir. Do you, did, were you always like this? You grew up, you said you, you grew up in North Philly. Yes. You grew up in Hunting Park. Mm-hmm. Were you always, you know, this way? Just straightforward. No, not, not even the straightforward. Were you always, you know, a man of, of God? Were you district to the Bible growing up? 
I was raised up in a very disciplined home. Okay. Very down to earth home though. Eight of us. And uh a lot of people think love is just when you're passive. They have like a one inside interpretation of love. When I was coming up and my father took that belt and took it to my behind because I was hard head, I felt as though he didn't love me. But as I got older and understood the value of what he was doing, I understood that love have a broader scope. So when you tell people direct and what they may call rigid, right away they say you're not loving or you're not expressing the love yeah. of Christ. And I totally disagree with such. Do you have any kids? Oh, yes, I have seven. Four Whoa. boys and three girls. Man. What do your daughters think about what you say about women? Or do they agree with you? Yes, they do. Of course they and would. And they don't agree with me because I'm their father. I believe they should be an independent thinker. And here's why I think they actually agree with him. Because they can see what the world is doing and it is not good for the women. It should be that plain and simple. And of course, they should know the Bible for themselves as well. But who's going to teach them from the cradle? It's going to be mommy and daddy. So when they see the example of their parents in the world, and they see the parents being different than the world, that's when they're going to understand. But if mommy and daddy acted, if mommy and daddy acted just like the world and trying to preach to them, no. They'll be like, well, what's the difference? You guys do the same thing over there that we are doing over here. There is no difference, so might as well just go with them. That's how, that's what they would have become, actually. But let's keep it moving. But I also don't want my daughters out here with walking the street with tights on and a halter that's just right. so men can walk around or drive by and bump their horn at them and whistle at them. So is it their fault or is it the men's fault for <sighs> sexualizing them it is the nature of a man to be attracted to a woman who hardly have anything on that's right tights and a halter top yes yes what uh, let's let's be so real who's, let's, so then i'm just trying to think if i choose to dress today and have on a tights okay. and a halter hear, top and a man up. honks at me it's my fault it's oh, the fault she's of both. Been, uh, if uh, you dressed in a way you don't believe that a woman can dress in a way that can lure a man to him? That's just okay. like saying if a woman what? puts on a tight dress, she deserves to get raped. No, that is not okay. saying that. Yeah. But woman, because regardless of what a person... You see, what she's doing is she's sticking something and stretching it and reaching. All right, why do women... No wonder why you guys are dying alone nowadays. Because you guys have, man, no compass where they don't deserve to get raped but at the same Anyways. time let me make this example please there are some men that drive a, a very fashionable car mm -hmm. and look a certain way and sometimes that look attracts certain, attracts women. certain women is that there are true? certain looks that a woman can have on that make her appear that attract certain men that's just a fact you go buy a car because you're attracted to the look, even if you don't know the engine, how it works. But that doesn't mean that it's our fault. Well, what, what's what? the proper dress for women? Hold on. Let me address the part actually. Because this woman right here, this woman is no-brainer, is talking like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, if I buy a 2011 Hyundai Elantra and a 2019 or a 2019 Bugatti which one do you think is going to attract a gold digger you think it's going to be the 2011 Hyundai Elantra no it's going to be the Bugatti that will attract uh, the gold diggers so if I don't want to attract a gold digger there are certain cars I cannot buy it's that simple. Whose fault is it? It is not, I would say it is not anybody's fault. Some people are just, do, some people do, just have evil ways. I can buy a Bugatti because I'm like, man, I really like that car. And I'm just driving around because I like it. But hey, a gold digger will see that come like, oh, let me get to him. At the same time, now this is for men, but for women, most of the time their dress is to get attention. Yeah, they like to say, oh, 
I just put myself, that's not always true. Most of the time, they dress is to get attention. They want men to give them, because they like that power to reject men. So no, if the woman knows by doing this thing, she is going to get a bad attraction, attention, and then put something else. The same for the guy. If you know by driving that car in a certain area, you're going to get attention from certain women, you can, one, don't go in that area, or two, when you go there, drive a different car that does not seek gold diggers' attention. It's that simple. You need to put yourself in a situation where you don't get into temptation or give temptation. That's part of life too. Like I said, they don't like accountability. But let's move on. I'm just saying from from a past from Pastor Jennings. Well, never mind for me. From a biblical perspective, the biblical term is modesty. Yep. And modesty, when you're addressed modest, you're not half naked. The Bible says that the shame of your nakedness not appear. Save you. Hold on. Let me ask you talk about that. So, funny thing is, why is it that when the, when men go to the gym, they dress a certain way? Do you not think women like to see men who have muscles and chest and abs? So, when the man go to the gym, what does he wear? Hmm? What does he wear? Yes, he was exactly what he knows that women are going to look at him. Men do it too. The only thing is, women are afraid to approach men. We are not afraid to approach women. So when a woman goes to the gym and they wear, and also they wear in those tight and everything is showing, yeah, they want that attention. I won't tell what happened to me one time at the gym when I was in school, what a girl did. Why she was walking in front of me. I was like, nah, this is, this is not how I give attention to women. Definitely not. Your daughter says, with three of your daughters, they, they come home and they say, daddy, they straight A's in school. I don't know how old your daughters are. They my home. oldest daughter is uh, 27. My okay. second one is 25. And my third one is about 20. I can see you smiling. About when you, when you, when you, when you, she's like 19. Sorry for, me to keep, sorry for me to keep up with all the numbers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> your daughters come home. Yes, they sir. say, Daddy, I just got straight A's in college, and I want to go see Rihanna or Beyonce no. go perform. No. Yeah. Do you give them the no. money no. to go to this concert? And, you know, no. sometimes Beyonce and Rihanna are dressed no. in certain ways mm-hmm. that you may not agree with. No, I wouldn't. All right. No, I wouldn't. I look at our young kids today. They use celebrities as mm. examples. Oh. And they feel as though if I don't look like this celebrity... I'm not beautiful. Exactly. What's wrong with the way God made you? Mm-hmm. What's wrong with the texture of your hair? What's wrong with the color of your hair? What's wrong with the shape of your lips? What's wrong with the complexion of your skin? You mean to tell me that God, who's all-knowing, who's infallible, mm-hmm. and who's perfect in everything he does, he done made a mess in his creation? Beauty is something you don't buy in a carton. Beauty don't come at your house in Amazon. Mm-hmm. And beauty is not something you go to the store and buy in a jar. Right. Beauty is not only outwardly, but beauty is also the mm. conduct, how we conduct ourselves. Yeah. So because, and again, on the flip side, you can have a person that go to church and dress and modest and everything and be the worst devil walking. Exactly. So I believe in both. I believe that if an individual going to be in church and represent Christ, I mean represent Christ. Some folks say, well, it's, it's not outward. It's both. It's out and in. And if you look at the Bible, the Bible actually deals with both yep. outside and inside. Imagine me a preacher. I'm mm. walking around smoking. Imagine me a preacher walking around flirting with women. Imagine me a bling bling preacher. Rings <laughs> on every finger and necklaces hanging around my <laughs> neck. You would think I'm a pimp. But I can see you didn't have any rings on your fingers. No, I don't wear them. Are you married? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. How long have you been married? I've been married now for 28 get it, years. Get it right. And all of your, and your, the same mom? Oh, kids? yes. Oh, yeah. yes. No, I don't have no children outside of me and my wife. What do the women in ministry think about your word? <laughs> what? Different ah. women have, you know, in the, our ministry? No, just. Oh, um, at large? 
women that are also ministers and pastors? Uh, we'll get that question. We'll get that oh, question okay. answered. They need to go to the Bible. All right. It is 833. Uh, Keep it locked right here to the Quincy Harris Morning Show. Pastor Gino Jennings, he's not going anywhere. You want to talk to him. 215-515-3481. That's 215-515-3481. Keep it locked right here to the Quincy Harris Morning Show with K Fox on 100.3 WRMB. We have Pastor Gino Jennings here. Uh, if you've huh. never heard of his church, he says some controversial things. He's looking at me like, no, it's not controversial. No, it's, it's not controversial. The word of God. We'll take a, this is a clip from his sermon. Okay. Anyways, I'm going to stop right here. You see, when people don't study God's word, and that's what Satan does. When Satan sees that people are preaching God's word as it is, then he wants to make it seem like it's a controversial topic. And that you are being harsh, and yeah, that's how that's how that's how Satan does it. He makes it seem as if what you are preaching is a is a bad thing. Now, remember when I when I talked about that part earlier, the people are traveling in the the two different the two different ways. Let me actually give you the. Let me actually show you. Um, let's see, we saw that part already. Let's see. Okay. So, in the broad world, all are occupied with their persons, their dress, and the pleasures in the way. They indulge freely in hila hilarity, hilarity and glee, and think not of their journey's end, of the certain destruction at the end of the path. Every day they approach nearer their destruction, Yet they madly rush on faster and faster. Oh, how dreadful this looked to me. What does that mean? They are, they are walking on the broad road. And those Christians, they think they are walking on the narrow road. Okay? And, um, and, and, and what happens is... Oh, man... So, okay, let me actually read that because I'm going to read this part for you guys and then I'm going to stop. So, here is what, is, what, what happens. That was at a conference in May, in May 9, 1856. Okay, I'm going to read this one and I'm going to close. The glory, and the glory and majesty of God were made to pass before me. Said the angels, the angel, he is terrible in his majesty, yet you realize it not. Terrible in his anger, yet ye offend him daily. Strive to enter in at the straight gate, not the narrow, not the broad gate, the narrow gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be at there be that find it. Those are just the words of Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 7. These roads are distinct, separate, in opposite direction. One leads to eternal life, the other leads to eternal death. I saw the, the distinction between the roads, also the distinction between the companies traveling them. The roads are opposite. One is broad and smooth, the other narrow and rugged. rugged. So the parties that travel them are opposite in character, in life, in dress, and in conversation. So, if you are, if you call yourself a Christian, there is a way you should be dressed. There is a way you should be talking. There is a way you should be behaving, which is different than the world. Like he mentioned, imagine him a pastor, and he is smoking. Imagine him a pastor, bling bling. Imagine him a pastor having sex with other women. Imagine him a pastor. Having kids with outside of, of his marriage, would you think he is walking in the narrow way? No. No. So when he said, imagine me bling bling, like what? Like yeah, one love, one love, yeah, yo. Pr pr. Imagine that imagine he is that kind of pastor. Would you take him seriously? No, you wouldn't. So please. He is messaging now. The only, they make sure to cut it into just that little section. But praise God, 
when Satan do, does something like this, it's a good thing. Because, you know, there are people that will take it and say, oh, this guy is an evil guy. In reality, they didn't listen to the whole message. Oh, well, guys, I'm going to stop right here. That was part two, actually. There's part three coming up soon because we haven't finished with that interview yet. So, like I said again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And if you're going to comment, make sure it's to be um, respectful because I do want to read your comments. But when you guys start saying bad words, YouTube takes them out and I don't get to see them. So, again, like, subscribe, comment, any concern. Don't forget to put it in the comment section below. And if there's another video you want to do, let me know and I can do it if when I if I find the video. This was T O V the Open VR TV. Hope to see you guys again. Until then I'm out.